Welcome back to Sikistan. Welcome back to us answering a viewer question once again. So we used to do a lot of these. We haven't done too many of them lately. But in a live stream a few weeks ago, we had somebody asked, how talented do you need to be to do small up, right? Um, and we'll kind of join in small of, small of junior, all that general bracket of programming for this. Um, and it just sparked our interest because a lot of people kind of see it as a, a milestone in their training career or kind of this thing that you have to go and do at some point if you want to squat heavy weights. A lot of people have done Smolov, a lot of people have done the Russian, Russian squat program, all these different kinds of programs, and a lot of people are interested in them. So I think the first thing is that your base input at the start of one of these programs is so utterly important, right? Because it's not just as simple as, oh, if you have a heavier 1RM, it's going to be more difficult for you. That's definitely true. Um, if you're doing this with 200 kilos versus 100 kilos, it's going to be a massively different ordeal but also it really matters with where you are in your kind of training career or training journey right so it's very very difficult to do something like this if you've already been training for five or ten years you've probably used up all of that massively aggressive uh, kind of new beginner gains period you know and it's not like it's not like you have to uh you have to be a complete noob to be able to run this because doing this within your first year of training definitely isn't a good idea but if you've kind of leveraged all the areas you can leverage if you've kind of maxed out your your rate of progression and you're making good progression as it is it's going to be very very difficult to run small of successfully i think the probably my biggest gripes with small off is that uh doesn't really matter now i suppose but in terms of its conception i think small is probably a little of a, a whimsical yarn i think it's a little fantasy tale uh, supposedly the sergey Smolov was a coach in the 70s and 80s in the soviet union and pavel tassolini in one of his books in the i think around the year 2000 or 2001 released this program and said that this was kind of the program they used to get his lifter stronger. There's also the Russian squat program, uh, and there's an interesting kind of tailor on that as well. Supposedly, the Russian squat program came from Alexander Karlovich's coach, uh, and a bit of investigation and questions to Alexander Karlovich showed that his coach, he'd never used that with him, and he'd never seen that program from his coach. So I'd wonder really a small off, even a thing, I'd wonder if there's any actual basis to the truth of small off being the program that they supposedly used. Uh, by and large, that doesn't really matter. This is the program we're kind of presented with today. A couple of the problems is that we see a lot of different ways of progressing small off and which one to do with them. And, and everyone will have their own way of doing small off. And the general vibe remains the same. It's like high frequency. Small off would be what you'd kind of call the, the shock and approach to improving your lifting. Uh, there's things from increasing 30 pounds from the week before. There's stuff where you, you maintain your percentages from week to week in that kind of base cycle. Uh, and there's a couple of different like peaking cycles and people have different phase in cycles. So it's kind of hard to even pinpoint what was the original Smoloff program, if at all there was one. The reality is, if that was used by this coach, Sergei Smoloff, the reality was his lifters were on in a huge amount of performance-enhancing drugs and likely didn't do any training without performance-enhancing drugs. A lot of the people who perpetuated this program as well in the early 2000s, mainly people from kind of uh, elite FDS kind of side of things, all of them were using performance-enhancing drugs. And when you're using a sufficient amount of these, then when we run this kind of program at high volume or shotgun approach, it's going to work pretty well. And you're going to be able to deal with it as long as you can kind of muster up the capacity to do those sets and reps. So along with the a normal lifters approach, right? If you're asking, can you do something like this? One of the main things you have to look at is frequency, then volume and then load, right? Frequency throughout the program, depending on if you're in what the ramp up stage or the intense stage, most of the time the frequency is four times per week. Sometimes it's three times per week, right? We've found, and most other coaches around the world have found that squatting frequency of two times a week is absolutely sufficient. And not just sufficient, but also the most efficient way of getting your squat stronger, right? So you pushing your squat very, very hard uh, four times a week is probably going to be too much. It's not just the thing of the overall volume in each session is too much or the overall load you're lifting in each session is too much. It's just the amount of times per week you're squatting four times per week is probably going to be too much for everyone. What we typically see and what most of you will probably experience or it's your training partners or people you know and you see online, the most common result we'll see is if a lifter is not on performance enhancing drugs and anyone who trains in a CrossFit box for long enough will have seen this as well. 
is uh, you or one of your training buddies will run it and inevitably you'll get the my knees are sore or my hips are sore or my back is sore or all three of the above and this is probably the most common complaint it's not that small enough wouldn't work if you were able to survive it like you'd certainly add some kilos to your your squat as some people do who manage to make it through the program but it's just by and large unnecessary it's just not necessary to do that much volume and that much frequency across the week we don't need to do it when we're training the most intelligent thing we can do is train in the most efficient way possible so do the least amount of work to make the most amount of gains and we continue on that fashion for as long as we can across our training career and we only do more work when we need to you don't need to do small off to go from 150 to 160 you know and we're huge proponents of training very very hard when needed anyone who's run our own rotating your squat program will know that it pushes you very difficult but pushes you very difficult it pushes you very hard but at the same time there's this order of magnitude where small off enters where it's just completely pointless it's somewhat uh, satanistic in regards to the volume when there just really isn't any need for that now i could see it if you're a lifter who is got six eight weeks or so or depending on what length of even small off you run and you've got an opportunity you need to increase your squat by a certain percentage and your coach gives you a whole host of special super mega vitamins then i could see it working in that scenario for everyone else i just don't think you need to do this now i understand the appeal of that at the same time mm-hmm. i understand why people want to do it it's kind of a cultural thing at, at a certain point it's not as popular in recent years as it used to be but it is still quite popular and i understand the desire to do it i get that from our own program from the rotonia squat program a lot of people love the intensity of it which it brings and how hard some of the days are but by by that kind of that thought process i would say just be kind of just be careful with it with small enough you it's beyond this it's beyond the realm of what you need to do to improve your squat it is something that is uh just kind of uh it's 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 almost like a challenge at the moment i would say i see it as the same thing as like owning an old Citroen C3 yeah. or like an old Fiat or something where people love it. They love to say they own it. Doesn't work that well. It's probably going to injure you in some way and it's just overall not a great thing. It'll be fun at some points. It'll be really fun to say you have one of those cars or say you're running small off, but it's really not that effective unless you're in one of the cases Gurf mentioned. I think one of the main reasons it's not that effective is it's not really that great a program overall it doesn't really make sense now when people look at the spreadsheet and they see all the different numbers changing and the the different levels of volume and they might start to work out total volume load or fluctuation volume load from week to week they might try and put some kind of some scheme on it as if to say oh this makes a lot of sense it really doesn't you know um most of the time if you're training intelligently to get towards a bigger squat you won't be doing things like 10s, 6s, 5s, 8s, 2s and 1s all in one week. You know, that's just not, that's not how most intelligent training cycles work. Most of the time we start off quite high with the volume work. Our volume tapers off then and our intensity increases as that volume tapers off. You know, it like most good programming is incredibly simple programming. And that's just how human adaptation works. So it's not like you're somehow tricking your body by doing really high volume and really high intensity in the same week and you're going to get both of those adaptations happening concurrently. You're really not. Like there's cases where weightlifters should be doing some sort of volume work and some sort of heavier work as they go through a weightlifting program. But that's in no way mean to push your squat to the max. You know, if we just want to focus on the squat, we need to really focus on the squat. Small off looks like a program that someone would write if they wanted to write what would seem like a tough program but appear to have some smart training principles that came from some form of sports science we've got that like base phase and then you've got your no no was it phase in phase is that what a phase in and then you've base phase and you've your intense cycle so you've got these kind of these flashy names for this certain parts of the cycle and then we've got these varying rep schemes and very specific things like four by nine. Instead yeah. of maybe just doing tens, you know, there's it's like four by nine in some of them. Uh, and you've got this kind of thing. It looks like a program that someone just made up, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, 100%. I would warrant Pavel never ran that program himself. I would bet if he'd never, I bet he never put a barbell on his back and did all those sessions. Mm-hmm. Maybe he did it with a goblet squat. Maybe he did them with like a really heavy kettlebell. With a kettlebell, yeah. 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 No, I, I really don't think, I think... The success of Smolov is by no means due to the 
the effectiveness of Smolov, the, the success or the, the popularity in in kind of strength training culture at the moment is down to the, what Gurf calls sadistic nature of the program, but it's definitely down to that kind of cult following it has. Um, in many ways, it comes down to the kind of cult following and that kind of glorification of old style Soviet programming, you know, which, mm-hmm. look, we joke around and call this Sikistan, you know, like we're, we're under no... Joke. We're under no illusions with that kind of glorification of kind of old Soviet stuff. But there was a lot of stuff that was just blatantly made up, you know. Of uh, We hear stories about people asking their coaches, and this isn't just in weightlifting, but in other, co- in other sports as well, where you ask your coach, like, oh, why do we do this? And it's like, is old Soviet method? Mm. You do not question. You know, and it, it really comes down to that, I think, why, why Smolov is still something people talk about. The, one of the largest issues with Smolov, for a lot of you watching this, is that it doesn't really let you do anything else, you know. So let's say, for example, you're a rugby player in your off season, or you're maybe an athletics person in your off season, and you're like, right, I need to gain a little bit on my squat, or the rugby player needs to gain a little bit of weight, or something like that, you know. And you run small off, but effectively your capacity to do any kind of conditioning or even base conditioning will be massively reduced. So you kind of remove that. Any kind of mild sport specific work you do would be reduced because the fatigue of this the kind of uh, the level of fatigue would be so large that it would definitely negatively impact your ability to your skills you'd be too tired to do any meaningful running or conditioning work if you had to do a little bit of that in your off season there's no way you'd really have the ability to fit in any other work so you probably couldn't be deadlifting to any meaningful fashion uh, upper body work would be definitely your capacity for that would be reduced uh, let alone not even to talk about doing this in season which would obviously make zero sense to do that but even in the off season this really reduces our capacity and some of them are up to like 13 weeks in length and most off seasons maybe rugby might be three or four months you've reduced a load of that off season to just improving your squat now obviously we're huge fans of squat a lot of the athletes we coach have squatting most of them do have it but there is a certain magnitude and quality to your squat that you need and small off definitely takes that far away from where you need it to be you don't need to do that much squatting to improve your squat for sport if it's weightlifters we're not going to have any capacity to any meaningful weightlifting you're not going to be able to do any snatches or cleans you're not going to be able to do any high quality pulls if we're powerlifters there's no way you're going to be able to get any meaningful deadlifting in here and benching possibly some benching but it's not going to be to a higher frequency which is what we typically see with benching so really small off is left for a scenario here where you really really need to improve your squat for a specific reason but as we said there's other better ways of doing that safer ways uh, because that's a major problem with this so even if the programming doesn't make so much sense even if it's just a made-up program the large result from this a lot of people is injury and you see a lot of people with a lot of different pain, specifically knee pain after the program, because they go from squatting once or twice a week, or in some senses, you might have crossfitters who uh, might squat once every two or three weeks, and they come into the program, and they go from here, in terms of like that kind of volume and intensity and frequency, up to here, no time for tendons and ligaments, joints and connective tissue to adapt to this increased training load, and it just smashes them in, we see a lot of inflammation, even if you don't see any permanent damage, we will generally see a lot of kind of... uh, tendonitis or early stage tendonitis issues for a lot of people uh, it's funny the amount of people you see who get hip pain from it and you don't mm. normally see that from people most people don't get hip pain it's not a common thing from running squatting programs it's certainly something that can happen to you you know mm-hmm. but it's funny how often you see people get hip pain specifically if we get powerlifters to run it with a very low bar uh, ass back style of squatting where the shins stay fairly uh, perpendicular to the ground we see them generally do expose their hips a little bit yeah. more now i know there's someone watching this and they're going to type in the comments saying you can't say something hurts you more than something else but like we said in other videos if i give you a phone are you more or less likely to make a phone call i think i'm probably more likely than if i didn't have a phone so if i bench am i more or less likely to hurt my shoulders than if i don't bench i think more likely okay so if we do a different style of squatting, there's a chance that different things will take the load. So we might have more chance of hurting things, just a little bit more. Uh, but we kind of live in an age now where people say you can't say that. We're really sorry if we hurt your feelings. Yeah, oh my God. You'll be actually, and lads, I know you think I'm joking, but people have commented on some of our videos. And, and messaged us after videos. Yeah. If you do want an intelligent way of increasing your squat that's going to push you very, very, very hard, uh, just look up the Seeker Strength Road to Anywhere squat program. There'll be a link down below and ask people in the comments. I guarantee you, if you ask someone, a lot of people will reply giving their experiences. Mm-hmm. Um, if you are a member of our, our kind of seek a herd, you'll get to see it in the members' Facebook page. A lot of people are running the squat program 
and you'll see how they get on with it. And make no mistake, there is some days that are very, very difficult in the squat program, most notably week four, day two. And a lot of people with the sub-180 program will, will know what we're talking about. So it's not that we're afraid to push people in the programming, but there's just say a certain point where it's just kind of stupid, you know. At the same time, we'd be very interested to see if anyone had run small off and watch your uh, your results, what are, are your experiences were from it, and if you were able to run the full cycle. And if you're on gear as well, that'd be interesting to see. Mm-hmm.